I'm Perry Van Tassel, owner of Hidden Valley Organic, and we uh, farm about 2,500 acres of, of irrigated ground. We have about anywhere from 1,100 to 1,500 acres of hay, and the rest is pasture and grain for our organic dairy. We farm in South Central Idaho. Uh, the valley's called Hidden Valley, and it's a kind of a high desert. Well, the biggest reason I looked at the steamer is because Unlike selling the hay, I have to feed everything I grow. So the higher quality of hay I can grow, the more milk I get out of my cows, the better it is for my animals. So the steamer, to me, it was a no-brainer. I mean, it was I can raise high-quality hay and be able to feed it to my cows, and I get a double return on my investment. Uh, we moved up from Camas, Utah, which is 30 miles east of Park City, when I was about 12 years old. My dad started on a homestead of 920 acres. He came to Idaho to be more self-sustainable for the dairy, to grow his own commodities for like barley and, and alfalfa because we was way too high in camas to grow those commodities. And then he passed away in 1984, and then since then we just kept growing the operation to where we're about 2,500 acres. We milk roughly right around not quite 1,000 cows. We try to uh, grow most all of our forages, all of our hays, and then we can purchase grains and stuff if we need to, but we try to be as self-sustainable as possible. You gotta remember, without a steamer, you start, you got no dew, so you got a bunch of stems with strings wrapped around it, and then you get dew, and you, you might get two or three hours a night, you get really good dew, so you bell along really good. And then if you get too much dew, you don't wanna shut down, so you got a bunch of wet bells, and then in the morning, well, you're gonna push that envelope a little bit longer, so you end with a bunch of stems with strings wrapped around it. Well, I think I seen an ad or seen something, I think it was Hay and Forage Magazine, as I remember right, but I could be wrong, but it was a magazine or online or something, and I seen this guy building a steamer to put hay up, and I thought, oh, that's kinda of crazy. But when I was down to the Tulare Farm Show that year, I swung back through Cedar City and I visited with Dave, and he had his first unit there as kind of his prototype. Well, during the summer, like always, we fought dew and everything, so it was probably September. We just flew down to Cedar City for one day, and he had the baler and tractor hooked up. He said, just go get in and bell it. I went and belled. I think I belled for about an hour down there, and I could not believe how beautiful the bells come out. And I'm like, okay, Dave, I want to get one of these. The biggest thing about the steamer for me is probably the first year I had it, we grew hay that year and, and it was third crop as I remember right. And we was bailing, we belled around the clock and we seen a storm coming in and I think we belled about 900 acres before the tractor ever got shut off. And we just pulled out of the field when the rain came and it rained for like 10 days after that. I figure like the steamer paid for itself in that one cutting just for the quality of hay we got put up. Everybody else's in the valleys was black and ours was nice green hay. I figure I bell about anywhere from 250 to 300 acres a night. That's my average a night. And generally we'll get anywhere from 450 to 500 bells. Now, when we was pushing the envelope a little bit, this last time in a 24 hour period, I think we belled, it was just shy of 700 bells with one baler and steam. And so we had a lot of people look at it and kind of thought it was kind of strange owning it and stuff. And, we had some people from Boise come down and they drove around in it and rode one evening with me and they couldn't figure out how they could use it in their operation and then I think a year later they had three of them and loved them. And the funniest thing was, was oh, uh, Stanley Hay Company, there was one day I was out belling the field and it was about three o'clock in the afternoon and their service truck rolls by and he sees me belling my hay and kind of appears that he doesn't want to want me to see him out there looking at the hay and so he kind of drives by and then when I'm on the other end of the field he comes back and he goes and looks at the hay and then he drives down the road and a little bit later he comes back and looks more at my hay and finally the owner of Stanley calls me out and says what the heck are you doing out there you're making better hay at three o'clock in the afternoon than I can make at night and I said I said yeah I was running the steamer he says can we come out the next morning so they come out with two service trucks and cameras and notebooks and they was ready to build or do something with the steamer and I just handed them Dave's card and said, why don't you just get a hold of him, he'll build you one for you. And uh, I don't know how many they run now, but I know they run quite a few steamers now and love it. The quality of 
of hay we put up is by far better with our steamer. With the steamer, you know, you can start out and you put a little bit of steam on as the dew goes down. You start letting the steam go off a little bit. If you get too much dew, you just shut down. Go take a nap and it really makes your life a lot easier. Well, especially from the first, when I had my steamer, a lot of people was wanting to know what, what, what it was all about. They'd drive by and they'd seen this train going through the field and everybody asked me what it is and, and how it works and everything. And I'd, I'd always tell everybody, if you don't want to purchase a steamer, don't come ride in the tractor with me because once you do it, you're, you're going to want one. There's no question about it. It's just one of those tools that makes your life, you get to, you get to bail your hay when you want to bail your hay and not when Mother Nature tells you you have to bail your hay. And so that's made it really good. So my, my theory is that if you don't want to purchase a steamer, then you probably had better never ride in one or, or see what it does.